The Moonstruck by Tanya Wheelock and Will Phillips. Interior, TS-52 facility, corridor, night. Three pairs of feet walk down a sterile, vaguely militaristic hallway. Leading the trio is Director Morgan Evans, a no-nonsense woman of authority. Flanking her are Colonel Matthew Vernon, a military man of constant concern, and Dr. Thomas Powell, a silver-tongued distinguished man in a lab coat. All three wear clearance badges marked TS-52. Vernon clutches a square, lidless metal box to his chest. Powell speaks with a frustrated, biting edge to his words. Director, Director, please, could we not at least have two more weeks? Why not ask for four or six? for all the good it would do. Fine. Four or six? Evan stops walking, causing Powell and Vernon to halt abruptly. And what could possibly change in that time, Doctor? She twirls around to face Powell. Unless there's something you ought to tell us. Powell is caught off guard by the accusation. As he stammers his response, he nervously grabs one of the containers from the box Vernon holds. Well... No, not at all. It's just, uh, we've been given an opportunity with this technology. Humanity has been given an opportunity. Save the speech, Doc. Humanity isn't footing the bill. Powell turns to Vernon. But, Colonel, surely the military... Vernon shifts his hold on the box he's carrying to raise a ceasing finger. The military knows next to nothing of this. But it's your job to... To inform them of developments that matter. Evans gives Powell a, we're done here, look, and turns away. Just so. She and Vernon continue their walk down the corridor. Powell twitches as he collects his thoughts, then hurries after them, holding up the metal case he took from Vernon's box. Then what? You're just going to spirit all this away? Dump it in some vault? Well, certainly cheaper than researching what's essentially turned out to be an extraterrestrial paperweight. Of all the grievously short-sighted... Enough, Powell. Your complaints have been registered with the directors. Our decision stands. As they approach an open exit to the building, Powell frowns to himself, then looks down at the small metal case he is still holding. He discreetly unlatches it, then jogs forward to swivel around and walk backward, facing Evans. Then perhaps you would make one final consideration. Whoa! Backing through the doorway, Powell is cut off as he trips over the threshold. Exterior, TS-52 facility, night. Powell lands on the ground, in the shadow of the building's entryway. The contents of his metal case tumble out and tumble across the pavement. Very dramatic, Doctor. Powell reaches toward a particular transparent cylinder that rolls away from him. It houses the processor a sci-fi bauble that looks like a cross between a microchip and a battery. All three sets of eyes watch as the cylinder rolls just beyond the edge of the building's shadow and into open moonlight. Exposed to the moonlight, the processor begins to emit a subtle purple glow, then one of its small blue diodes lights up. Vernon's jaw drops. Evans can't help but let the barest hint of surprise past her stoic demeanor. Powell, his expression hidden from the others, allows himself a knowing grin. He scrambles across the pavement over to the cylinder. Staying down at ground level, he places a careful finger on it and slowly rolls it back toward him into the shadow. Once cut off from the moonlight, the processor inside ceases to glow. Its diode turns back off. It's the moonlight. Their technology is activated by moonlight. Vernon looks to Evans with genuine surprise. Evans looks to Vernon with a knowingly raised eyebrow. And you've just discovered this, Doctor? Powell, ignoring her remark, carefully rolls the cylinder back out into the light. It reactivates. He picks it up and slow turns back to Evans and Vernon. I don't suppose a last-minute breakthrough would impact our timeline, would it? What do you want, Doctor? Oh, two, four, six weeks ought to do it. You have six weeks, Doctor, not a minute more. And how would you like me to explain this sudden realization of yours to the rest of the directors? Powell, standing in full moonlight, glances carefully between the cylinder and Evans. Tell them that it turns out even a seemingly dormant thing can be revived under the exact right circumstance. 
Powell gazes upward to take in the night's near full moon. Possibly a good place for a title card. Interior, Hugh's household, master bedroom, day. A pair of eyes open in startled stupor as an alarm clock goes off with obnoxious flare at 7.15 a.m. We see the subtitle, Six Weeks Later, beneath the action. A man's groan is heard from the adjacent king-sized bed. He reaches an arm out to try and hit the snooze button, but misses the clock by a couple of inches. His next attempt to hit the button knocks the clock off the nightstand and into the gap between the stand and the wall. It hits the ground with a clatter, but its alarm continues to wail. The man sighs and sits up in bed. He is David Hughes. Tall, handsome, well-built, a former military lieutenant in his thirties. He puts a hand to his head and massages his temple with firm pressure. He glances at the empty spot next to him in the bed. He hears noises from the kitchen downstairs. The alarm clock wails again. After a brief inhale... David swings himself out of bed.